soon. Happy Star Wars Day, everybody. Y'all sick of that pun by now? May the force be with you. It works, it works best the first time. You know what I'm saying? It's May the 4th. And this is Money Flippin' Matt Richards jumping out of hyperspace with a Jabba size with social distancing. You know, social contact is a lot like Star, Star Wars. Yeah, we appreciate it more when it's been gone for a while. Eventually, the experts will call off quarantine, and it'll be like when The Phantom Menace came out. Okay? In the meantime, we're putting up 5,000 standard Imperial credits for everyone who exhibits the wisdom of Yoda. That money is not for people who run off without completing their training like Luke. Thanks. And as usual, we're helping out a great organization that's making a big difference during tough times, because it's the right thing to do. Tonight, it's Mass Design Group. Mass Design is a nonprofit team of over 100 architects, engineers, designers, builders, and more all over the world committed to researching, building, and advocating for architecture that promotes justice and human dignity. Their designs for buildings, parks, memorials, housing, and more work toward a climate positive future, efficiency, and sustainability. Their work is now centered on redesigning spaces to adapt to COVID-19 and mitigate infection risk. So, we're matching tonight's prize money with a $5,000 donation to Mass Design Group. And right about now, here's their executive director, Michael Murphy, with something more to say about it. Take it away! Hello, HQ. This is Michael Murphy. I'm the executive director of Mass Design Group. And we just want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for this generosity and this opportunity. We are designers working every day to support healthcare workers on the front lines of this surge and redesign the spaces around them so that they are protecting themselves, protecting patients, and reducing the incidence of infection in medical spaces all over the country. And we couldn't do it without the generosity and the support of so many of our contributors and our friends and our colleagues and our advocates. And we are grateful that you are one of them. Thank you, HQ. Thank you so much, Michael. You can check them out at massdesigngroup.org. And again, donations are always appreciated. All right, well, is everybody ready to do the quizzing thing? Because I know I am. I can hear them growling. I think they're hungry. For your brains! Because <laughs> I'm going to let them out the cage. You know, just open the cage up and release the questions. Soon as I feel that y'all ready. So throw some fire emojis in the chat if y'all ready to, to light, light it up. Light it up! Pew, pew, pew! 
Yeah. I was trying to find some like uh, storm troopery looking swag, but I got this. This one is polka dots. Black and white, it's like a storm trooper. Question number one. Let's go. Which of these dishes is made of eggs? Omelet, pork chop, or glass of juice? What is it going to be? Now, you don't have to be a master chef to know that our power to turn ingredients into food is highly limited, okay? For a lot of us, it's limited to bread into toast and eggs into omelets. 93,369 of you got it right. Omelet is the answer I was looking for. Shout out to me making them tiny pancakes last night. Y'all saw that? Oh, it was a painstaking labor of love. And one I will not repeat for a while because it took so long to just, I burnt the first batch. Okay, question number two. What form of theater is unscripted? Drama, improvisation, or musicals? Looking for unscripted, all right? Lock it in. All right, this is just about a synonym for unscripted. Some of the best comedy out there and certain other kinds of theater are improvised. Improvised musicals are pretty chaotic because dancers crash into each other a lot. 92,030, got it right. Improvisation. Yes, and question three. <laughs> Here we go. Who delivered the Gettysburg Address? Andrew Jackson, Abraham Lincoln, or Theodore Roosevelt? Get his bug address. I reached for my mug and stuck my thumb in it. It happens. Some U.S. History 101 here, okay? Big deadly war happened. Battlefield got turned into a memorial. And the president said we can never dedicate this field better than the fallen soldiers have. It's one of the highlights of Honest Abe's career. Abraham Lincoln! Who got it right? 81,828. Got it. Yeah! You did that. Question four score. <laughs> Woo, I like that one. Have no fear, sanitizer break is here. Why so glum, my son? Uh, my hands are so dirty. Oh, no. But never fear, son. We can just have a... Sanitizer break. Sanitizer break. Get the bone. Sanitizer break. Sanitizer break. So clean. Get the thumbs. <laughs> Shout out to my man Eugene and the whole Beyond family. I love you guys. That was hilarious. Okay, so clean. Here we go. Which language uses a Cyrillic alphabet? Greek, Russian, or Turkish? What's it gonna be? Yeah, I said a Cyrillic alphabet, not the Okay, because there are a few of them around Europe and Asia, but just about all of them have that asterisk-looking letter thingy and that square W thingy and uh, the backwards R thingy that you've seen in Russian text. 45,277 got it right. Russian. And I didn't know, I, for years, I didn't know it was called an asterisk. I just referred to it as shift eight. A little fun fact about me. Okay. Question number five, for your teachers. Here we go. Which of these nations has a Mediterranean coast? Albania, Serbia, or Macedonia? Mediterranean coast. Lots of countries gotta get in on the Mediterranean, okay? Slovenia has a little jot of coast, right? A little teeny tiny coast. And even Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah, they got 12 miles if you zoom way in on the map. But that's nothing compared to Albania's big old slab of coast. Big old coast slab. Mm. Big old coast slab. All right, that's a savage question. For your mind. For that asterisk. Girl, shake the asterisk. That's my new single. <laughs> 23,000, y'all got it right. And uh, I got a surprise. It's a prize question. Okay? Y'all know how these work, right? You get the question right, and then you can either take the coins and run, or you keep playing for those five Gs. It's up to you. Totally up to you. Let's do it. Question number six. In the Peanuts comic strip, who was Charlie Brown always losing kites to? A bulldog, lightning, or a tree? Hmm. Charlie 
Brown, losing kites. Reading Peanuts was America's morning ritual for 50 years. And one of the running jokes was that Chuck couldn't just fly a kite. The malevolent kite-eating tree wouldn't let him. Here, take it! <laughs> you big dumb tree! 31,167, they all got it right. It was a tree, not a bulldog. Snoopy probably would have messed him up. Get out of here. We're offering 633 coins to 31,167 players with six questions remaining until the $5,000 jackpot. So what you gonna do? Let me know. You gonna take that money? Maybe there's astronauts. Maybe there's aliens. <laughs> Oh yeah, 6,959 of you chose to take 633 coins. Congratulations. We still have 24,879 in the game. So shout out to Luke and uh, and the rest of you. I only saw Luke's name. It's just, Luke, on May 4th. You use the force, Luke. Good job. Taking them coins. All right, question number seven. In what type of game did Luigi make his first appearance? Arcade, console, or handheld? It's a him, Luigi. All right, most of us probably first saw Luigi in NES Super Mario Bros, right? Boom, but that of course was the sequel to arcade, non-super, just plain Mario Bros. But even before that, Nintendo released the handheld game and watch. Shookadurred. Oh my gosh, that's a savage question. That was so savage, I'm gonna sing the song. Savage question song. Sorry you got it wrong. Savage question song. That's a savage question song. Hit him with the shoulder. <laughs> okay, oh boy. I bet everybody that took those coins is really happy right now. Question number eight. Hope you're feeling great. What up, Nate? Did you, you saw how savage that was? He's like, yeah, yeah, I did. He do the same thing every time, he's so crazy. Okay, here we go, question number eight. Which is the title of a Black Sabbath album and an Arnold Schwarzenegger film? Cross Purposes, Predator, or Sabotage? What's it gonna be? All right, any phrase sounds ominous if you make it the title of a metal album or a Schwarzenegger movie. Penny loafers. Tuna melt. And probably working independently, they came up with 1975's and 2014's Sabotage. Come on, I got to see how many people got it right. Wow. Yeah, you did it. Wow. 6,871. You did it. So good. Wow. Come on. Get to question nine. We have to go. Run. Come on. Wow. <laughs> Question number nine, here we go. Wow. What state does not have a geologic epic named for it? Mississippi, Pennsylvania, or Utah? One of these three does not have a geological epic named for it. America may be called the New World, but the landforms have been around just as long as anywhere else, right? And the Carboniferous period is cleanly cut into two epics the Mississippian and the Pennsylvanian. Utah's got dinosaurs, but that's, that's paleontology. 4,221 of y'all got it right. Utah, so clean. Oh, so clean, so clean. Here we go, question number 10, my friends, time to get it in. Disney's Lady and the Tramp was based on a story about a dog with what name? Dan, Ward, or Walt? What is it going to be? It's a bit of an obvious trick to name a dog after a movie producer whose attention you're trying to get. So, as far as I know, nobody's tried it. But, in his original story for Cosmopolitan, Ward Green used the title, Happy Dan, the Cynical Dog. 2,825 of y'all nailed that one. Oh boy. Dan was the answer I was looking for. That's what the dog's name was. Originally, here we go. Question 11, all dogs go to heaven. Which of these is not a hip hop alter ego of Gregory Jacobs? Humpty Hump, Quasimodo, or Rackadelic? What's it gonna be? 
We digging in the crates for this one. It's a little old school hip hop for you. All right. Hip hop artists contain multitudes and often create other personas to exhibit a new side of their personality. Right. Greg Jacobs brought comedy to the proceedings through Humpty Hump. Do it, baby. I do the hump, the hump. I do the hump, the hump. Okay, I'm sorry. And he also designed album covers under the name Rackadelic. No Quasimodo, y'all. Sanctuary. Sanctuary! And the sanctuary is question 12. Sanctuary! <laughs> Dark fire, hellfire, make Esmeralda. That guy was so angry. Why was he so mad at Esmeralda? She would be oh, because she didn't love him. Terrible. And then Quasimodo came through and saved her, but she still went with that dude with the blonde hair. I was like, come on, Esmeralda, you know Quasi feeling you. What's wrong? Dang, that made me mad. Because I always felt like a Quasimodo when I Okay. Whew! Question 12! What's that smell? Smells like you're one question away from $5,000. So don't fudge this up, babies! Here we go! Question 12. What is credited as the first TV sitcom to show a toilet tank? Leave it to Beaver, I Love Lucy, or All in the Family. You got this. Alrighty, here we go. I don't know what fictional characters do instead of going to the bathroom, okay? But three years before Alfred Hitchcock broke the toilet taboo in Psycho, a censorship battle led to the compromise of showing just the tank on Leave it to Beaver. Uh-oh, uh-oh! Hey, we have 1,961 winners of HQ Trivia because you knew that Leave It to Beaver showed a toilet tank. Woo! Yeah. Said all those words so fast, I like it. <laughs> Congratulations, across the nation. Yeah. Sweetie doop doo doop. Do the hump. Congratulations, Christy Whale, Shane Moe, Smoke Every, what? <laughs> Kathleen Stu, Theron Moe, everybody's $2.75 richer, and that ain't bad, 1,818 winners. Another game, folks. I had a good time. I hope you did, too. As always, we do this every night at the same time, 9 p.m. Eastern. And that charity, again, is Mass Design Group, using design to make the world a more livable place for everybody. Okay? So check out their great work at massdesigngroup.org and give something if you can. Until next time, this is Money Flippin' Matt Richards saying, they say alcohol is a depressant, but I ain't never seen a sober person try to do a backflip off a car bumper. <gasps> I can't believe you wanted me to do the whole game like this. That's ridiculous. Okay, I'm a grown man. Who wig is this even? Was this Sharon's? This was Sharon's wig. Hey. Okay, what you doing to me? What you, this ain't even, this Rick and Morty. That ain't even a Star Wars sound. Come on now. I'm kidding, I love you, Gabby. This is comfortable.